Hello and welcome to the second video in the series on simple regression. In this video I'll be showing you how to calculate and interpret the t-test on the slope coefficient. In addition we'll be looking at a confidence interval for the slope coefficient, the uh, formula and interpretation of that. Uh, as before we're using the same Dale on uh, ice cream sales in hundreds of dollars. The data is a time series over 20 consecutive days in the summer. We're using high temperature of the day as our predictor variable to help us understand the changes in the ice cream sales. Uh, again, uh, we are ignoring time. We're analyzing this as a cross-sectional uh, data set, even though we know it is time. So the first thing we'll do is reproduce our regression uh, output like we did in the previous video. So go to data. Data analysis, regression, press OK. I've got things highlighted already, but uh, I'll check these off and let's do it again. So input Y range, select that window and then highlight sales. Input X range, highlight the variable temperature, include the labels. So check that box labels. Uh, for confidence level, the default is 95. Let's uh, change this to 90, and then output range, let's put that right here, and we'll ignore this other stuff. Okay, so here's our regression output, and like before, I like to clean this up somewhat. I'll stretch out this first column to about 12, abbreviate some of these st statistics so they don't uh, get hidden. A lot of these... Uh, components we haven't talked about yet, but we will get to them shortly. Uh, over here, here's a lower and upper bound of a 90% confidence interval. I'm going to get rid of the decimal place and the extra uh, zero showing. Now I select all the points that are not whole numbers, and I say home format to three decimal places. Right. These numbers and the number of observations, our sample size, are whole numbers, so we don't format those to three decimal places. Okay, I'm uh, formatting a bit more, and now I'll write out the regression equation. Uh, the fitted sales is equal to negative 8.431 plus 0 0.433 times temp. And what we get from this is on average, for each additional one degree higher the high temperature of the day is, we expect, we expect sales to increase by about $43.30. The intercept does not have any physical meaning as we are, that would be a prediction well outside the range of our temperature data that we've collected. So we can use it though to make predictions within the range of data we've collected. Okay, next is to uh, conduct the t-test. So uh, we already have some T stat output down here. We're focusing on the slope, and I'm going to uh, grab some information from another sheet to speed this up a bit. So when you're conducting a T test on the slope coefficient in a simple regression analysis, we need to specify our hypotheses first. So uh, I'm copying this, and I'll paste it in my worksheet right here. So here's our hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the true slope, beta 1, is equal to 0. That means that there is no relationship between temperature and sales. However, the alternative says if the true slope is not 0, then there is some relationship. This is the two-sided test. The not equal sign means uh, before we collected this data, we were not sure whether the relationship would be negative or positive. Uh, although in our case, we probably do know that warmer temperatures are associated with higher ice cream sales, uh, in which case you could do a one-sided test if you firmly believe that. Okay, we're conducting this test at a 5% significance level. This is our probability of making a type 1 error, a 1 in 20 chance. Type 1 error, again, is rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it's the truth. Okay, step 2 is to find your test statistic. 
Okay, the test statistic takes our, t, our uh, slope coefficient and standardizes it by the standard error of the slope. Okay, and we have that number. It's already computed for us to be 7.183. Take that number, divide it by that number, and you get this number. So I'll just write that here. Now if you take these two numbers shown in the output here and divide that in your calculator, you'll get something slightly different from this due to rounding error. Okay, step three. Now this, uh, uh, well, step two is our essentially our standardized slope. And uh, we know that a t distribution roughly follows a normal curve. It looks like a normal curve, a little bit thicker in the tail, shorter in the middle. But under a standard normal curve, this would be a very extreme value. So we already know that we've got some high, strong evidence against the null. The bigger this is, the more evidence against the null hypothesis. Okay, let's go back to uh, step three where you need to quantify the evidence. Okay, I'll copy part of that out here. Quantify the evidence from the test. Let me insert a column here. Have a little bit more space. Okay, met, met, there's two methods to quantify the evidence. Compare the computed t stat to critical values. So you take alpha and split it. Subtract that from 1 to look up the appropriate percentile from a t-distribution, and you use uh, n minus 2 degrees of freedom, or in other words, the degrees of freedom for the residual term in this ANOVA table. Okay, so on page 298 of our textbook, we could look this up and find that the critical values are plus or minus 2.101. Okay, and uh, the next thing we should do is interpret what happened. So according to this, if the computed t is in the critical, I'm going to add another space here, several spaces, okay. If the computed t statistic right here is in the critical region under our reference distribution, uh, smaller than this critical value or larger than the positive version of it, then we should reject the null. So let's take a look at what that means graphically. Okay, here we are. So I made up, this is a T distribution with 18 degrees of freedom. It represents all the possible standardized sample slopes if the null hypothesis was true, the case in which temperature is not related to sales. Okay, so assuming the null hypothesis is true, we would have to get beyond this red line or this or below this red line in the critical region, which is defined by alpha. Alpha is split into the two uh, regions here because it's a two-sided test. That leaves 95% of the area in the middle. And that's why we look up the 97.5th percentile. That'll leave 95% in the middle, or 97.5% all the way to the left. Okay, our evidence from the data, 7.183, came out way out here, way out in the critical region, so we should reject the null hypothesis. The evidence is overwhelming. Okay, there's another method. Method two is the p-value method. And it's equivalent to the critical value method. Compare the computed p-value of your test which in a two-sided test situation is two times the probability of getting the absolute value of your t-stat, uh, which in our case happens to be 1 times 10 to the negative 6, or 1 in a million. So, in other words, this means if the null hypothesis was true, that there's no relationship between temperature and sales, there's about a one in a million chance that we would end up with a sample slope as large as what we got or in standard units as large as, as 7.183. So very unlikely to happen um, if the null hypothesis truly was true. Okay, so the rule for the p-value is if the p-value is smaller than alpha, which in our case is generally 
then we should reject the null. And it certainly is smaller than alpha. So the bigger the t, the smaller the p, and the stronger is the evidence against the null hypothesis. Okay, so actually I'm going to stop this video now, and in another video I'll do the confidence interval for the slope.